in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all and with your spirit we come to the eucharist on this 22nd sunday of the church's year we come to experience the love of god in the eucharist we see god's desire to give and love and share endlessly as we listen to his word as we recall the lord's saving action as we are nourished we will experience his grace and strength we thank the lord for moments in the past week when we experienced the lord's presence his closeness to us he is the lord of the universe and yet he cares for each one of us personally Brothers and sisters let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries I confess to almighty God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault through my most grievous fault therefore I ask blessed Mary ever virgin all the angels and saints and you my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the lord our god may almighty god have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life amen lord have mercy lord have mercy christ have mercy christ have mercy lord have mercy lord have mercy let us give praise to god in the words of the gloria let us pray god of might giver of every good gift put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nurtured through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit god forever and ever amen
a reading from the book of Sirach. My son, perform your task in meekness. Then you will be loved by those whom God accepts. The greater you are, the more you must humble yourself. So you will find favor in the sight of the Lord. For great is the might of the Lord. He is glorified by the humble. The afflictions of the, of the proud has no healing. For a plant of wickedness has taken root in him. The mind of the intelligent man will ponder a parable, and an attentive ear is the wise man's desire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The words of our response. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brethren, you have not come to what may be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom, and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet, and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us prepare our hearts for the gospel. Sing alleluia to the Take my yoke upon you, says the Lord, and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. to the Lord. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. Now he told a parable to those who were invited when he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, when you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit in a place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, give your place to this person. And then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. He said also to the man who had invited him, when you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Society is constantly putting a value on things in terms of quality or price or importance. This product is better than that. This area is more costly than the other. This package gives you more facilities than that one. And so on. All this type of comparison is part of our daily dealings for our material needs, and it is required. But when we do the same, applying these principles to persons, then it can be dangerous, and we lose track and lose sight of our focus. We do have our circles of concern. There are those who are close to us, whom we love greatly, and whom we are greatly concerned about. But we cannot discount anyone and leave anyone out of our sight. We cannot disregard people and say, this person doesn't matter at all for me. It doesn't matter what he or she says. He's not an educated person. This person is not of our status. Such statements or such thoughts and attitudes are not in keeping with Christ's invitation to us. Sometimes we think that we have achieved something great and we would like people to appreciate us for that. Today's readings invite us to be humble. Our first reading from the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus emphasizes the value of humility in contrast to pride. And the author says, the greater you are, the more you should behave humbly. In our gospel passage, Luke urges his community to seek humility. He noticed that there was the tendency to give importance to certain people, greater respect to them, and to neglect some in the community. And he warns the community. He says this attitude should never take root in their hearts. And he reminds them of Jesus' call to humility. He tells them, take the last seat, avoid embarrassment, do not seek the places of privilege and honor. Rather, seek to be lowly and humble. And so we are urged to grow in the virtue of humility. Humility does not mean acknowledging that I am useless, saying to myself, everybody else is better than me. I have no talents, I have no gifts, I can't do anything worthwhile. No, 
That is not true humility. Humility means firstly acknowledging that I am a child of God. And that is where my dignity comes from. I am one with my brothers and sisters in Christ. I am a child of God who cares for every human being. That is what gives me my dignity and from that and accepting that makes me humble. Secondly, humility means realizing that I am not perfect. That as a human being I have my weaknesses and my failings. I am able to recognize my strengths. I am able to recognize my weakness. That is true humility. And therefore humility means being myself before God and before others. The parable that we heard from the Gospel according to Luke warns us also about the danger of valuing persons because of their wealth or their status or their influence or what they can do for us. And so he tells us in the parable, invite those who cannot repay you. Give a feast to those who will no way be able to give back to you. Very often we do something with the intention of getting in return. And the Lord invites us to be generous, to give, to be other-centered. What gives a person his or her dignity? The fact that he or she is a child of God. No matter what one's status is, what one's background is, what one's educational qualifications are, whatever abilities the person has, ultimately, his or her dignity comes from the fact that he or she is a child of God. Sometimes we tend to look at people in the way we deal with things. We begin to set a value on this person in terms of importance, in terms of quality, and we can discount people. People should be treated with respect and dignity. That is what the Lord asks of us. We may not do this openly of judging others, but possibly as we meet people, as we walk, as we travel, as we discuss, something may be going on in our mind and we may be putting a value on persons and at times discounting or neglecting people. We ask the Lord to help us overcome this, to help us truly be humble. The parable reminds us that the focus cannot be ourselves. We are called to be other-centered, to seek the good and the well-being of those around us, to be animated by love that goes out. Christ loves the church and gave himself for us. And in a very special way, married couples are called to witness to this through their love for each other, to bear witness to the love of Christ for the church. Their love for each other makes them commit themselves for the whole of their lives to each other. Love pushes one from being self-centered to being other-centered, to relate in generosity, in sharing, in giving to others. Love overflows. Pope St. John Paul would say, love between spouses creates the communion of the family. The love between husband and wife builds up the communion and bond of union in the family. And so love is life-giving. Love goes out. Love thinks not of itself. If we begin to be selfish, then that relationship will not last long. The love of the couple flows to the family. From the family, it must flow out to society and to all around. In that way, we widen our circles of concern. While there are people whom we will relate to in a very special way, we cannot discount or disrespect anyone. Each one has his or her dignity given by the Lord. And therefore, we deal with each one with respect, with dignity. We are to be humble before God. We are to practice humility before persons. And a third area where we are invited to be humble is before creation. 
when we are in touch with creation, we realize how little we are, how small we are in terms of time and in terms of space. The universe is vast and expansive. And now more and more science is able to tell us the greatness of the universe. And we as human beings are just so small in this vast expanse. Even in terms of time, we have come in so late in the history of the world, of the universe. And that makes us feel humble. To believe and to realize that God, the all-powerful Lord of the universe, who has created this great universe, the master of time, still cares for each one of us. And as his children, gives us our personal dignity. And so whenever we are in touch with nature, we are filled with wonder and awe. We are left with a sense of humility before this great creation of God. Our second reading from the letter to the Hebrews tells us that Jesus is the mediator of the new covenant. In order to establish this covenant, he became a human being. He humbled himself and became one of us so that he could save us and lead us into this bond of love with the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And so we thank the Lord Jesus for emptying himself and becoming one of us to save us. This is what we celebrate at our Eucharist. May we enter more deeply into this great mystery of God's love for us. May we not boast about our achievements, but rather know that our true dignity comes from God. And may we respect every human being, irrespective of his background or qualifications or abilities or status. Each one is a child of God. And may we be filled with wonder and awe when we behold God's creation. We come to the Lord with humble hearts. We come before the Lord in all sincerity. Lord, this is who I am. Kindly stand as we profess our faith in God, the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayer of the faithful. Let us surrender our needs to God who provides for the poor, the orphans, the widows, and all who believe in his merciful love. Our response is, hear our prayer, O Lord. Together. Hear our prayer, O Lord. For our Holy Father, bishops, 
priests, religious, and the lay faithful, that we may all serve in God's kingdom with the spirit of humility, seeking the glory of our gracious God. We pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear our prayer, prayer O Lord. Lord. For all our political leaders and decision makers, that they may work towards channelizing God's abundant blessings with everyone irrespective of gender, financial situation, and religious orientation. We pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. Lord. For our children and youth, that they may share the abundance of the blessings they have received through the service they render in church and in society with the spirit of gratitude to God who provides all our needs. We pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. For an adequate monsoon, that we may enjoy God's showers of blessings and be kept safe from the irregularities of the weather. We pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear our, our prayer, prayer, O Lord. Lord. For the prayers we make with faith in God, that we may enjoy the generosity of His grace. We pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear our, our prayer, prayer O Lord. Lord. Gracious Lord, we are always grateful to you for having invited us to share in your banquet of love and mercy and for listening to the prayers we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what, is celebra what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sahana in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Oswald, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, where we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Lord, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank the Lord for this day, and we pray that you, we will use it in praising and glorifying the God. God in all that we do. May we truly treasure our relationships and grow in humility. Have a happy Sunday. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks. be to God.
Sartre's voice.